Big Tech continues its mission to silence dissenting voices one by one. This week, liberal journalist Naomi Wolf was the latest victim, suspended on Twitter for sharing controversial opinions about the coronavirus. Journalist Glenn Greenwald called out the tech giant's free speech crackdown, tweeting, quote, there's a virtual industry of operatives funded by the Atlantic Council, which in turn is funded by Gulf state despots and U.S. intel agencies and NATO governments, whose purpose is to demand the Internet be purged of anyone dissenting from their orthodoxies. Joining me now is Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author of Security Democracy, Glenn Greenwald. Uh, Glenn, thank you very much for coming on. You are very much in demand because uh, you tell it like it is and, I, and your experience speaks for itself. But when we deal with people like uh, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, being banned from social media, to Naomi Wolf, who gets bumped and YouTube videos are disappeared, go into the memory hole, I contend that, in fact, it's not really even about them, that that is a message to everyone else, that if we can do it to them, and it's convenient to do it to them because they're, they might be irritating to people, but it's also a message to the average person that you had better, in everything you do, watch what you're doing because the new rules mean that you're going to be canceled if you say something that is unapproved of. What do you think of that? What's your take? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that sometimes this gets cast as an ideological war against the right, and I don't really think that's quite correct. Obviously, conservatives do bear the brunt in the United States of online censorship, but I think it's much more about barring anybody from questioning the pieties of the ruling class elite. There are a lot of people on the left who are anti-establishment who also mm -hmm. get banned. Naomi Wolf is no conservative mm -hmm. at all. And the really interesting thing, Tammy, that I think is worth noting is that when Donald Trump was banned by Facebook and Twitter, a lot of world leaders, including ones who don't feel very positive about Trump, like Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron and the left-wing president of, of Mexico, condemned that banning and warned that if tech giants work with the government to ban whoever they want, democracy is in peril. And I think that's the right message that lots of people around the world see, except for journalists in the United States. You know, it's interesting uh, with your tweet going through, right, the, the global establishment, uh, having an interest in this uh, foundation, this platform, several platforms that give average people a, vo a voice, which, of course, is irritating for them. And, and yet we had, uh, I think it was Nigeria, where Twitter had taken off its leaders, uh, a tweet by its leader, and they banned Twitter from their country. It's as though Twitter is being treated like a, a separate sovereign nation because of its impact across so many boards and governments having to respond to what is an American company, a publicly held American company, but needing to deal with it like it's a country. Uh, do you see it that way? Because there's a point where this, the only solution seems to be to make this a, 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 a utility in a way here in America to stop the nature of this octopus from developing, from enveloping everything. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I'm against censorship in all cases, but if you have a government that's censoring, that's democratically accountable, you can vote those people out of office, you can influence exactly. what it is that they're doing. With tech corporations, they have no democratic accountability at all. They can do whatever they want, and because they're monopolistic entities, they're starting to control and police our public discourse. And the other aspect that I think is very alarming is that it's oftentimes not even these corporations like Facebook and Twitter and Google that are doing it. They're doing it at the behest of governments. There are now Democratic exactly. Party hearings all the time demanding they censor more. Other governments around the world insisting that dissidents in their countries be silenced. It's really like a union between state and corporate power trying to police and control the Internet, which is supposed to be this innovation that liberated us all from right. centralized control. Right. And, of course, that was the threat in and of itself. And it worked. And it works. So this is uh, clearly, uh, when we talk about threats to not just the United States, but the world, uh, this is one of them. We don't have an administration now, I think it's safe to say, that has the courage to stand up to it, but, but we will soon. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Great stuff.